welcome back to the Story Corner. I'm Kester, Chief Storyteller around here. And if you like a good book, you've come to the right place. I'm guessing you are here for Matt Porter's Ms. Law and the Corn Fusing Case of the Broken Window, Chapter 2. Let's get straight into it, shall we? Lesson 2. Innocent until proven guilty. There's the chapter heading. Our classroom window was shattered, just like Pete's chances of winning the corn test. He gazed at the tennis ball sized hole in the glass, unable to drag his eyes away. Pete muttered the same sentence over and over. A window breaker will never win the corn test. You'll be right, I said. It's a home run, Radley slapped Pete on the back. Wrong sport, I snapped. Home's where I'd be running if I was Pete. This room's a mess, laughed Radley. You can talk, I turned to face the bully. You tipped all the balls on the classroom floor just to get one? Radley didn't say anything. He didn't need to. A few balls on the floor were nothing compared to a smashed window and the mess it created. Shards of glass lay amongst the lavender in the garden bed outside. Ding! The morning bell rang. The door flung open. A lady in pinstripe slacks and a collared shirt strode into the room, wearing impossibly high-heeled shoes. If her brown hair was pulled back any tighter, her face would have been on top of her head. She dumped a leather briefcase on the teacher's desk. My name? Miss Law. My job? Relief teacher. I sighed. Great, another crazy relief teacher. Since our old class, old teacher, Mr Brown, turfed his gear in the back of his ute and headed for the city, we'd had a succession of crazy substitutes. Outback Creek, after all, is in the outback. Our school doesn't have the luxury of picking the best teachers. Even if they're half mad, they get the job. Ms Law's eyes locked on the crime scene. What's this? She looked smart enough to recognise a broken window. I figured she wasn't expecting an answer. Pete gave her one anyway. Ah, it's the lockers. He waved his hands shakily in front of the plastic tubs overflowing with worksheets. Above the lockers. Ms. Law raised her pencil-thin eyebrows. The roof, blurted Pete. Highly recommended for keeping out the weather. Ms. Law got straight to the point. The broken window. Uh, that, um, it's not half as interesting as the roof. Pete gazed up, fake amazement plastered all over his face. Excuse me, if I could just say a word... Weasel raised his hand, pretending he knew about manners and had some. We were having a hit of cricket this morning when Pete took face to the ball. Ms Law glanced at the student, flush-faced and sweaty, pacing by the window. Pete, I assume. No, Pete Peterson, Pete pointed to the name tag on his locker for further proof. Radley took up where Weasel left off. Knowing I'd just grabbed a new tennis ball from the classroom, I bowled a slower ball to give Pete a chance of hitting it. He swung like a madman and belted the ball through the window. I crossed my arms. Several lies needed correcting. No one saw the ball Pete hit go through, go through the window. I knew this for a fact. The cypress trees blocked the view between the oval and the classroom. Radley stated the facts that mattered to him. Someone hit the ball. The window smashed seconds later. He pinched two rulers in each hand. Radley formed a makeshift frame and held it in front of Pete's face. We have a photo of the suspect. It looks like this. Maybe it was someone else's ball, I pointed out in desperation. Maybe it wasn't even a ball that smashed the window. Weasel pointed at me. You're right. It wasn't a ball that smashed the window. It was Pete. Order! 
demanded Miss Law, pulling a gavel from her bag. Whack! She banged the wooden hammer on the desk. The class fell silent. Ms. Law rubbed her nose with her index finger like she was in the milk bar and didn't know which lollies to buy. Every citizen has the right to defend themselves. Pete, do you wish to stand trial on the window breaking charge? Pete shrugged. Ms. Law helped him to decide. Alternatively, as the only suspect, we can assume you're guilty and begin setting your penalty. Um, trial, uh, sounds great, blurted Pete. In the blink of an eye, Ms. Law had rearranged the classroom into a courtroom. She sat perched behind the teacher's desk at the front of the room. Tables were positioned either side of her. Pointing to the table to her left, Ms. Law asked, who would like to present the prosecution's case? Attempt to prove Pete's guilt? Aha! Our first win. Pete's a popular kid. No one would want to get him in strife. No one except Weasel and Radley. But in a courtroom battle, those boneheaded bullies would definitely be featherweights. No prosecution. She'll have to let you off. I reached out to shake Pete's hand. Before our hands met, another rose from the back row. Ms Law pointed and smiled through her thin lips. So did Pete point, that is. There was definitely no smile. Half words fumbled from his mouth as Brittany straightened the corn test trophy on her desk. She strode to the prosecution's table, glaring at Pete through slitted eyes. Pete shook his head. This isn't good. The table for the defendant, Ms Law pointed to the table on her right. Pete shuffled to the table and flopped into the chair. Who do you wish to defend you? asked Ms Law. Pete chewed his fingernail. He pointed at himself. Me? Ms Law whacked her gavel on the desk. The defendant elects to represent himself, although I hope is not a case of the defendant who rep represents himself has a fool for a lawyer. Ten minute recess. Then the trial begins. The room buzzed. The class murmured. This would be the biggest trial in Outback Creek since Weasel took on the bakery, arguing his finger bun contained no fingers. According to him, that meant false advertising and a lifetime of free buns. Our very own weapon of maths destruction, Nathan, tapped away on his calculator, figuring out the chance Pete had of being found not guilty. Mm, number of detentions served divided by rubbish pieces picked up voluntarily um, plus uh, number of times forgotten to put the chair up. Don't forget the hours spent helping my prep buddy, said Pete. Nathan finally hit the equals button. <sighs> Pete's got an 18% chance of escaping conviction. Holly knew the odds were stacked against our mate. She scanned possible escape routes in case a quick, a quick escape was needed. Pete didn't seem concerned. He grabbed several cookies and a banana from his bag before striding towards the door. Standing shoulder to shoulder, Weasel and Radley blocked his path. Miss Law, the accused is trying to escape, said Radley. Pete stammered to explain himself. Um, you said 10 minute recess. 10 minutes? Recess to plan your defence? Yes. Ten minutes to play outside? No, said Miss Law. Weasel smirked. He's an escape risk. We should lock, lock him up. Radley jerked open the storeroom door, sending spiders scuttling for cover. The buffhead bullies latched onto Pete's arms. The judge wasn't pleased. Place Pete in custody? Application denied. He is innocent until proven guilty. Pete shoved a cookie in his mouth. Holly sidled up next to him and whispered, Get me some fishing line, three paper clips and a stapler and I'll bust you out of here. Maybe later, mumbled Pete, sending chop chip crumbs flying from his mouth. He grabbed a notepad and began furiously scribbling his courtroom strategy. 
the trial was about to begin. And that is the end of chapter two. If you would like to read more about the corn fusing case of the broken window, then get yourself a copy from the local library or ask at your local bookstore or have a look online. You can certainly get it there. I hope you've enjoyed the story. I will see you another time. Bye for now. Thank you.